Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to... So, this is Pastor Jim Taylor from the Haven Baptist Church in sunny Kunsan, South Korea. It's uh, Sunday morning, and I am at the church, and yesterday was Saturday, and I was supposed to put out my latest video on Your Questions Answered, and a lot of things going on, and uh, this is like second or third priority on my list of things that I'm supposed to do in a week. So, bottom line, it didn't get done yesterday, but I'm getting it done today. And I got a question this week, which was, I thought, quite the question. Um, the question had to do with uh, the, the strangest church service that I had ever been in. So that's how the question came to me. And uh, so I thought that I would describe the, the, chain, the strangest church service that I had ever been in. Um, as you know, I'm a missionary in Korea. And my, uh, my family and I decided that we were going to go back and visit the States. And so uh, my wife and I, actually, my kids are gone. They're grown. They're gone. They're living in the States now. But uh, we went back to visit. And when I went back, I decided to go down and visit my dad, who he lives in Charleston, South Carolina. And so when I got there, he says to me, he says, son, um, I've been going to this new church and uh, I, want you to, uh, I want you to talk to my pastor. So I said, OK, what's the name of your church? And he says, well, it's called My Father's House. I immediately got bad vibes because uh, in, in, in my humble opinion, um, you know, my father's house doesn't sound like the name of a church to me, you know. Uh, I like it when it says, you know, Charleston Baptist Church or something like that. Uh, so I, I, I said, okay, all right, let's see how this goes. So he calls his pastor and his pastor says, well, listen, I, I know you're a missionary and maybe we can just get you to speak this Sunday if, you know, if you're free. And so I said, you know, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I uh, want to do that. I don't want to sign up to that because I, I may have other things going on. Uh, the truth of the matter is I was a little weary about, you know, preaching at my father's house. So I didn't know what to expect. So I said, you know, I just kind of bowed out of that. I says, if, if I'm still in town, uh, I, will, I will visit. So, you know, that kind of wrapped up the phone call. And later my wife and I, we went back to our hotel room and, I told my wife, I says, you know, let's go to this place and let's just kind of make a list of things. Maybe nothing's wrong or maybe everything's wrong. And uh, I, can, I can talk to my dad and see if I can get him out of that church and get him in a good church. So uh, we went there and that morning, that's, that's, that Sunday morning, I'll never forget it. We pulled into the church parking lot and I felt like I was driving into, um, I don't know, the Walmart parking lot or the local skating rink or something, just, just from the way that people acted and you know, from, from the way they dressed, it was like, you know, is this church or, or, or are we going to the beach or what's going on here? Uh, it was unbelievable. And so my wife and I went in and we walked in and we sat down and uh, I looked up to where the, the preacher would normally be standing. And uh, off in the corner was a, a, you know, a full up rock band drum set in the whole nine yards. And I thought, okay, this is really going to be interesting. And so there was a guy up there and he was hopping around with a microphone in his hand. And, you know, he had, uh, you know, kind of long hair and, you know, his shirt kind of opened down to about here, looking all kind of cool and macho, as cool and macho as you can look in your mid forties, I guess. And I thought, oh, he must be the lead singer or something. And so after a couple of seconds, he saw us. And so he kind of put his mic down, bebopped on over to see me. And uh, when he came over, he introduced himself. Turns out this guy was the pastor. I was like, oh, well, that's, uh, that's well, that's interesting. Good to see you. I started making my list. <laughs> and so, um, you know, the service started. And um, I'm, I'm sitting there going, this is, this is live. This is going to be quite the, quite the scene, you know. And so we're sitting there waiting for the, the service starts. And there's no songbooks. They, they, they announced a song, a title of which I didn't know. And uh, I looked up and they had this big screen TV up there and they turned it on and it was YouTube. And they brought up a, a YouTube video, CCM YouTube video, and, and everybody stood up and everybody's supposed to sing the, this, the song, um, you know, basically a Christian rock song off of this YouTube video. And I was like, wow, this is, uh, 
you know, this is beyond anything that I thought I was going to experience. And so this is going on. And my wife and I were just kind of standing there because we're like, mm, no, we're now, no, we're, we're not into this. And so, you know, after two or three YouTube song slash video things, we sat down. Now, there, there are no songbooks in the church. There are no Bibles in the church. I'm the only guy there wearing, wearing a suit. Um, I'm, I'm the only guy there that's got a Bible, you know, except for my wife. And, and so we're sitting there and she's looking at me like, what kind of mess did you get me into now? And I'm like, honey, I'm sorry. You know, I'm just doing this to try to help my dad. We can make it through this. We'll be all right. So, um, so then uh, we're sitting there and announcements, announcements, announcements. And, and then he says this. He says, um, uh, listen, uh, if you are a man of God, um, I would, you know, a, a minister or a, a pastor or something like that. I would like you to come forward. And so I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm watching. There's like six, seven, eight people. They're going up there, you know, uh, and they're, they're standing there. And he says, oh, Brother Taylor, you're, you're a missionary from Korea. Why don't you come up and join us? And honestly, at that point, I was thinking, okay, so what's going to happen here is that we're going to have maybe a time of prayer or something or, you know, I, don't, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, but I certainly wasn't expecting what was going to come next. So I went up there and I'm standing there and he says, now nah, y'all turn around and face the people. So we all turned around and we're looking out at, you know, all, all the people. And I, I guess there was, um, you know, anywhere between 100 to 150 people there. I don't know. And so we're standing there and he says, now these men are the anointed men of God and they've got the power of God in their life. And if you need healing, you come on forward. And I mean, people just started coming up. And I was like, oh, my Lord, I am in the midst of a healing service. How did this happen to me? And I'm standing up there and this woman makes a beeline to me. I mean, she's just like Whoa, right into me. And, uh, you know, and I reached out and grabbed her hands real quick because I was scared she's going to hug me or something. I didn't know what was gonna, going on. And she says, I've got the demon of alcoholism. And I said, um, okay. Uh, have you ever accepted Christ as your Savior and repented of your sins? She says, well, no, I've never done that. But I said, well, upon what do you base your salvation? She says, well, I've been, I've been going to this church now for about 10 years. I said, well, going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Well, the interesting thing is, while well, all these people down here, because I was the guy on the end, remember, I was the last one to get up there. All these guys down here are doing their hocus pocus, dominocus stuff. Uh, I took the time and I led this lady to the Lord. And so she, she prayed and she, you know, made a profession of faith and turned around and went to her chair. And I was thankful nobody else was in my line. I guess I took too long healing somebody. So I kind of slipped down to my chair and sat down. And when they were all done with their people, you know, uh, then they, they all went back and sat down. And, and my wife says, what happened? What, what did you talk about up there, you know? And so I, I told, told her what happened. And she's like, probably the only person in the whole church that actually got any kind of spiritual help was her. And so, I'm, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm like, wow, what could possibly happen next? Then the pastor says this. He says, um, we, you know, we don't normally do this, but we're going to have a guest speaker today. And I'm sitting there going, oh, no, he's not doing this to me. He's not. And he goes, uh, you've never heard this person speak before, but I guarantee you, you're going to like it. It's going to be good. And then he named off some lady's name. And this, this woman gets up there to preach. And she gets up there and, you know, the Bible is pretty clear, Second Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, that a woman is not to, not to do that sort of thing. And so anyway, she gets up there and she starts preaching, okay? She's got a handful of Bible verses on, on love out of the Bible. And her, her thing is, she, she, was a, she was a psychiatrist, okay? And so her thing was, you've got to love yourself first. If you, if you don't love yourself, there's no way that you can love other people. And you certainly can't love God if you don't love yourself first. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, according to the Bible, you know, to, to love God and love your fellow men, that upon this hangs all the law and the prophets. What in the world is she talking about? So she keeps going on and on about loving yourself. And my wife had had enough. She starts digging into her purse because she had these, these earplugs that they gave us on the airplane on the flight over. And she was trying to find those earplugs. I'm so sorry. We got cut off in the middle of there. I got a safety alert on my phone and everything stops when you get a safety alert, right? So anyway, so let me catch you up. My wife was digging in her purse. She's trying to get the earplugs out. She can't find them. She's struggling to find them. And I'm thinking to myself, if she finds them, do I let her put them in or do I take them and put them in myself? You know, I, I just can't handle this woman telling me I need to love myself or else I can't love God and all of this. So 
you know, all of this is going on and the service goes on and they wrap up the service and, and so we all, we all go home, right? As soon as it was over, I mean, I didn't shake hands, say hello to anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody because I didn't want to tell them what I was really thinking. And I beat feet for the car. So my wife and I go out and get in the car. Now my brother, he was in town at the time and he decided to go to church with us. And so he comes and he gets, he gets in the car and he says, he says, listen, uh, we need you here. This place, there's a spiritual famine. See what I'm talking about? This place is terrible. Then I, so I was like, uh, I would love to brother, but God's called me to Korea. So I got to kind of stay there. And so uh, dad comes out and he gets in his truck and we all head off. And so dad stops by the store. We go on to the house and I'm sitting there and my dad's not in yet. My wife's like, what are you going to tell him? And I said, well, I, I guess I'm just going to have to tell him everything. And so uh, we're sitting there talking about what I'm going to tell him. And my dad walks in and opens the door. He comes in and he says, son, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I didn't know that that was going to happen. You know, I'm never going back to that church again. And I'm like, okay, good. Well, that's a discussion we don't have to have, I guess. And so he says, uh, I said, well, why, Dad? What, what did you see that was so wrong? And he says, I can't believe that woman got up there and, and they got a woman preacher up there and he, she didn't even use the King James. That's all, that's all he noticed. Everything else, I guess, had been going on and he never even noticed, but that was a big deal, right? And I was like, oh man, uh, I don't know. Should, you know, I'm glad that I didn't preach there. I'm really glad. I wouldn't want anybody in the world to think that that would be my standards, but I got to tell you, I was so glad when my father left there. He picked up the phone. He called the pastor. He says, Pastor, I'm not going back there. Uh, I don't believe in, in woman preachers. She, besides, she didn't use a King James. I can't do this, and I'm out of there. Those are the only things that he cared about. Um, so it was, it was very interesting for me. Here I am, an independent Baptist preacher. I don't believe in any of that stuff that happened. And I sat there through this whole service, which you know was over an hour long, and I was able to make it out of there without making a big scene. And uh, it was incredible. So there's the answer to your question. The strangest church service I was ever in. Um, I, I don't know if this video has been helpful to you or if it has been a challenge to you or whatever. But let me just say this, all right? God has given us worship. And worship is God's way. If you don't think that that is right, you go ask Cain and Abel, all right? Uh, Cain killed Abel. And he killed Abel because Abel was righteous and Cain was not. And when they gave their offerings, God said to Cain, or God said about Cain, that he did, had no respect for Cain or his offering. So it was not just the offering, it was also the man that was making the offering. Uh, you can fast forward to the book of Leviticus. You got two guys, Nadab and Abihu. Uh, the Bible says that they offered strange fire before God. And God killed them. Why? Well, because the, the offering that they made was wrong. God was very clear on the kind of incense he wanted to be used. And then secondly, because the men that were making the offering were the wrong men. God very specifically lays out guidance in his word about worship. And it would behoove you uh, to get into that and, and read and, and learn what the Bible has to say about worship. I can say this, uh, when it comes to music standards, if, if music sounds like the world, um, you know, it doesn't belong in the house of God. Uh, the preaching, the preaching has to be, you know, God-centered. What is this man-centered garbage? You, there's enough of that going on already. And then on top of that, it was a lady that was doing it, and the Bible's very clear. As I said, 1 Timothy chapter 2, the last part of the chapter, uh, suffer not a woman to usurp authority over a man. And so, um, you know, there's lots of things wrong there. Um, I would, if I, were, if I were listening to this video, evaluate your church that you're in, if you're listening to this, and if you find that they're sticking to the, to the, uh, to the old pass, uh, they've not tried to move the landmarks of God, if you will, um, that's the church you need to be in, and that's the place where you can learn and grow from God's Word. Uh, with that, uh, God bless you, and have a great week. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart.